Are you tired of not being familiar with Linux? Are you looking to install Linux as a virtual machine in your home lab? By the time that this video is done, you'll be able to install the Linux operating system as a virtual machine in your home lab. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, check out my website at johngood.com to get access to training courses without distracting interruptions or advertisements. Make sure that you sign up for my newsletter using the link in the description to get your free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. You can also join me on the Discord server. The link is in the description. All right, let's get into the video. Linux is one of those operating systems that always seems to intimidate people, whether it's from how the file and folder permissions work or even just installing Linux as a virtual machine. I bet if we ask 10 people if they prefer Windows or Linux, that we're going to get at least eight people saying Windows. The truth is, as a cybersecurity professional, you need familiarity with the Linux operating system, and it is crucial for your career. One of the great things that you'll notice is that Linux really doesn't change much across different versions, unlike Windows, which might change actually drastically between major versions. With all that being said, in order for you to become familiar with Linux, you need to get a virtual machine of Linux installed in your home lab. That way you can start exploring. For this video, we're going to be using CentOS or CentOS as our Linux operating system. The reason why we've chosen that is because typically in work environments, you're going to see Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And basically CentOS is the free version of Red Hat. It just doesn't have support. We'll be installing CentOS inside of VMware Workstation Pro. However, the steps are going to be very similar no matter which virtualization software you use. So Hyper-V, VirtualBox, it will all be pretty similar. Once you finish this video, I highly encourage you to check out the Linux training for cybersecurity playlist that's on my channel in order to get additional Linux training. All right, let's head over to the computer and begin. Now that we've switched my computer screen, we need to go ahead and get the ISO file for CentOS. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna search for CentOS and the CentOS project is what we need. So we'll click on that and we need to click the CentOS Linux because that's what we want. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this very first one here. So we can see that's gonna be the newest version, version eight. So this x86-64. Now this will take you to a bunch of different mirror servers and you just need to pick one in order to download it. So I'll click this first one. When you go to the mirror website, you'll have a few different options. So you'll have a boot ISO. If you wanted to use like a USB drive and boot off of that ISO, you could do that. You could do a DVD ISO or you can do a minimal ISO. We're gonna just do the DVD one ISO. We'll go ahead and download that. All right, now that we've downloaded that, we're gonna go ahead and open up VMware Player Pro. All right, and then we're gonna to go to File, and then we're gonna do New Virtual Machine. And we're gonna do a typical installation. We need to select the ISO file, so we'll go ahead and browse. And here it is. And then we'll select Next. Now we need to put in a name of a user, so ours. So I'm gonna put John, and my username is gonna be John, and my password is gonna to be Tour, so T-O-O-R. And I'm just using this for the actual demo installation. This VM will get wiped out after I'm done with it. But you can see the password is for both the user and root account. So just make sure you remember whatever you put in here. And then we'll hit Next and you can name it whatever you want. And we'll go ahead and hit next. Now the disk size, you can make it whatever you want. Of course, this is going to determine what you can put on that hard drive because essentially what it's doing is it's making another hard drive. Basically it's a file that's going to be used as a hard drive. It's more accurate description. But again, you can make it as big or small as you want. This is recommended for CentOS is 20 gigabytes. So we're just gonna stick with that for this. And then you can split the virtual disk into multiple files, or you can have it as one single file. I'm just gonna leave the defaults on this. And then you can customize your hardware. So if you wanted to customize your hardware, you can click the customize hardware option and you can select how much RAM you want. So I'll up this a little bit just so it doesn't act slow or anything. 
probably way overkill, but I'm going to give it eight gigabytes of RAM. You can change all the processors on here if you want. I'll give it a little bit more power. Again, I'm going to get rid of this virtual machine once it's done, so it doesn't really matter. And you can just go through these different options here. But all in all, it should be pretty good to go. So I'm going to hit close and power this virtual machine on after creation. We want that checked because that's going to automatically turn it on once it installs. And then we're going to hit finish. All right, so now it's going to be booting up into it. I'm going to make it full screen here so you can see. All right, and now it's booted into the configuration phase. So it's going through and using some of those options that we provided it as far as like the username and the password. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit that thumbs up to like this video. And if you think of any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Also remember that this training and courses can be found on my website at johngood.com without distracting interruptions or advertisements. All right, let's get back to the content. You'll notice that if you've ever installed a Windows operating system virtual machine, that there's a lot more options to configure. With Linux, it's very easy. There's just pretty much a few options that you have to configure, and then it just does the rest and gets you into the actual operating system. So let's go ahead and log in. And that's the user that I created was this John user. And we'll use my tour password. And we're greeted with the getting started prompt here. We'll go ahead and close that because we do not need that. And we are in the operating system. Now, one of the things that I like to do when I first install a fresh operating system as a virtual machine is I actually like to install any updates that are available just in case something has come out since that ISO was released. Remember, it might be a month or a couple months since that's been released, so there could be some pending patches with whatever is prepackaged in that ISO file. So in order to install the updates, we're gonna go to the activities up in the upper left here. We're gonna click on the terminal icon, and this will bring up the command line, and we're going to type SU and then dash and then it's going to ask for the password. Now this is switching users to that root level user. So the password is going to be that password that we configured. Remember it was the same for the user and the root user. So that's going to be the tour password that we put in. Okay, now we are in a root command prompt. So now we can do anything as root. And that is distinguished right here. You can see this pound sign. That means that we're in the root username. And then if we look at the John username, it was a dollar sign. Now what we're going to type is we're gonna type yum and then update. And this will go through and this will check for updates that are available. And it says this is the total download size, so 307 megs. Make this a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit better. And we'll scroll up here and you can see we're already getting an alert saying that there's updates available but this will list out all the different packages that are going to be installed if we say yes. So again, if you wanna look at the specific ones, you can see them, but that's for general information that that's what that's listing. So what we're gonna type is we're gonna type a Y for yes, and then we're going to hit enter. Now it's going to go through and it's going to install all of those updates that have been released since that ISO file was originally released. And then now we're getting a new warning message and this is for the CentOS official signing key. So we're going to hit Y for yes again, and we're gonna install this update as well. Now in the future, there are ways that you can update individual packages if that's all you want to do. But since we're doing an initial installation here, that's the reason why I'm upgrading everything because I want it to be the most up-to-date with anything that's on there from the get-go. All right, and now that's complete. So all of those updates are installed. Now what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and reboot the system. So we'll type reboot and we'll boot back into the system. And then I'll show you something else that you wanna do as well. Now that we've fully updated the operating system to the current levels. Now we need to sign back in here. So again, we'll type in my password of tour. 
All right, now we're back in the operating system again. This is fully updated to the current levels. So now what I always will do is I will create something called a snapshot. That is basically a backup of this operating system at the current time, and it's going to save that. So if I ever mess anything up and I wanna come back to this original state, I can do that. You can take as many of them as you want, but it's a really a good idea to do it, especially once you do updates. So we're going to bring down the bar here. And with VMware Player, this is what it does. It puts a bar at the top. Usually that's what the different virtual machine softwares do. But with this one specifically, we're gonna click VM and then snapshot. And then we're going to take a snapshot. And we'll name this. Usually I'll name it something like fully updated, fresh install, and then do the date. So today's date that I'm filming this is 819, whoops, 2020. And then if you want, you can put in a description, whatever you want to put in here, but it just depends on what you're going to use it for. Obviously, if you're going to give this to somebody else, you might not want to put the username and password, or maybe you do, but it's definitely helpful to put that in there. And then we're going to hit take snapshot. Now, again, this is going to create a copy of this virtual machine at this time. By taking this snapshot of the operating system at this time, again, if I mess anything up, I install an update right after this or a piece of software that just completely ruins the operating system, I can revert to that snapshot and it will be just like this. So if I wanted to go back to that snapshot, let's say I wanted to revert that, again, I would go to VM, snapshot, and then it's right here. So I would get a list of them if I had a whole bunch of different snapshots, and I just click on the one that I want to go back to. And you can see revert to snapshot because that's the last one that we did. So we'll go ahead and click on this one. Do you want to restore? It's going to take it back to that state. We're going to hit yes. Doesn't matter because we haven't changed anything, but just to show you so you can see that. All right, and now we are back to this point. It's very useful in case, again, you mess anything up or you install some software that you don't like. Maybe you upgraded a piece of software that you really wanna go back to that old version. It's very useful to take snapshots and I encourage you to use them frequently. Definitely take that base snapshot. That's extremely useful. Question of the day. How much prior experience do you have with the Linux operating system? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walk through everything that you need to know and to do in order to install the Linux operating system as a virtual machine in your home lab. I highly encourage you to check out the playlist on my channel that covers additional Linux training for cybersecurity. Remember that in your career, it's crucial that you not only become familiar with Linux, but comfortable with Linux too. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without distracting interruptions or advertisements. And I'll see you next time.